Are we recording? Are we, live? we are. We are live. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Brian uh, back at you with another video and this time I have a little bit of help with my friend Gamil Burzi. Thank you very much for doing this. Glad to help. Okay, and so I got an email from uh, one of you guys, one of the viewers, and this person is a fourth year electrical engineering student. He's frustrated. He wants to know how to get a job without having co-op experience. And so I thought I'd bring Gamil here. He's an engineer to help us out with this. I think it'd be good to have his insight, his thoughts, his comments, and his experience to really give some expertise as to how to approach your game plan in terms of getting a job before you graduate, uh, especially particularly with the engineering background. So let's get started. Gamil, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, what you do. Um, please. Sure. I, um, I'm a, an engineering consultant for uh, heavy industry and um, what the industries that I typically work in are uh, mining, pulp and paper, and wood products. And I've been at the same company now for 10 years. Um, so I got my start, uh, I got an engineering job uh, when I graduated in 2004. And after a few months I decided uh, that wasn't the right job for me. I left and did something else for a bit and um, I got recommended to the firm that I'm with now in 2005 and I've been with them for 10 years now. And so we're consultants, uh, we, we do project engineering for uh, industrial clients. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down the email sent to me uh, line by line and we'll just go through it that way and that way we can address hopefully every point. I am a fourth year electrical engineering student. My GPA is too low to get into the co-op program and I don't want to graduate until I get some experience. Uh, right off the bat, he's in his last year, uh, which is typically the time when students start thinking about, you know, what kind of experience they need to do in order to get a job. But what do you think? It's fourth year, is that too late? Uh, well. Typically, if, if you were to mm -hmm. go the co-op route, uh, typically they start in the end of the second year, I believe. Um, so fourth year is, a, is, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge, but assuming he does have the opportunity to find something and, uh, and take some time off, I, I definitely think there's some benefit to getting the pre-graduation experience. Right. Uh, from the point of view of the employer, when they're uh, assessing candidates, it's always good to have somebody with a bit of experience. From the perspective of the applicant, it's good for him to have some experience to, just sure. to try out different industries right. uh, and see what he, if he would like to uh, remain in the industry. Right. And now in this case, the guy doesn't have co-op experience. So what can he do uh, because of that? Like, is there something else he can try? Um, I, I would suggest that he uh, start networking from now and contacting uh, potential employers. If he doesn't have any employers in mind, then what he could do is attend some networking seminars uh, or not necessarily seminars, but he could look for... Uh, like an association and or an, something like that? Yeah, an yeah. association. Uh, there's... Uh, the Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists, they host events. It might be an idea to look some of that up right. and uh, attend some seminars so you could get some contacts prior to graduating. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, how about in terms of GPA? Does it matter? Like, is, Do employers look at GPA, especially in the engineering sector? I think it's very seldom that employers would look at the GPA. I think what's more important to an employer is probably the person's uh, experience uh, mm -hmm. in terms of work experience, also in terms of uh, hobby experience or what that person's into if they're you know fixing their own cars, if they're repairing their own stereos, that kind of hands-on mm -hmm. skill uh, is better you know, is, I think it's it will do more for the uh, applicant than uh, than the GPA, right? And so he might okay. want to look at some of that. So right now, his goal is to either network with associations, like engineering associations, 
as well as look for um, like a summer job or internships outside of co-op. Is that something you'd recommend or you yeah. know what saying? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, he has to get involved uh, with some things that, like I said, give him the hands-on skills and start networking yeah. to make some contacts. And I think that will go a long way. Also, in, in the pre-graduation phase, if he has some chances to interview, uh, even if those interviews aren't successful, you still need that practice and... Um, interview practice, like practicing, like just to interview itself is what you're referring to. Yes, that's okay. that's correct. And sure. also having some something to talk about in the interview, that's where I said maybe even a hobby work uh, might come in handy because it gives them something to talk about confidently in an interview. Okay, good. Let's mm -hmm. move on. Um, okay, so then the next part he says... Uh, the students in class have inflated grades as they all cheat and engineering internships are always asking that you be enrolled in co-op or internship program at your school. Now, do all students cheat? Uh, I find that to be a little bit far-fetched. Um, you know, depends on what the, what he's considering cheating. Sure. From, from my own experience, I've seen it where students will collaborate to finish an assignment and I think that's a positive thing if you're working together to understand the fundamentals uh, as long as you're doing it that way I think it's a positive uh, experience for everyone involved um, when people just copy answers from each other you know then that's a different question and I think that you know that doesn't really help anyone so but you're saying that most people didn't cheat then yeah, I would not say that okay. every engineering student. So maybe this guy yeah. might be a little bit jaded or a little bit negative. I, I don't know. I think it's kind of hard to tell. But based on it, it sounds like no one's really cheating. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that he mentions that, though. Um, okay, so the next part he says, I hardly have any friends in the program because they refuse to help me with anything. Now, uh, again, this is why I feel like he, he might be a little bit negative. Um you know, does he have any friends to start with, or maybe he's kind of expects his friends to help him out, or at least give him you know all the answers to an assignment? I can't tell. Um, but what are you, what are your thoughts in terms of friends in the faculty or or with you as students? Like, what are your thoughts there? Um, well, I could yeah, speaking from my own experience, um, you know, I, I have some friends that I went to university with, and we all did the uh, mechanical engineering program. And till this day, we stay in touch, and I consider them uh, uh, good friends. Um, having friends is important. Uh, one because it helps you with the uh, you know the social aspect of uh, university. Uh, it's something that you know one of the benefits of going to university. Mm -hmm. And uh, afterwards, we stayed in touch. Sometimes we bounce ideas off each other or discuss problems that we're we're uh, trying to solve at work. And so it's good to grow that network of friends, um, you know, who have studied in a similar field. Yeah. Uh, so, and also after he graduates, I think those friends might be helpful to, to uh, give them some job leads if they, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. if they have something that they know about um, and just generally staying in touch. Yeah, I think you're right. Like your, your friends or... Your soon to be friends, they could be potential job networks, right? Like, or potential f to get hook you up with a job. So you really want to see the value of that uh, from that perspective, rather than just seeing your friends as someone who can help you with an assignment. But ten years from now, they might hook you up with a pretty sweet opportunity. And so I think it's important to, you know, not shun everyone and maybe see, you know, offer them help or try to reach out to them and try to build connections with them. Uh, from that perspective, if anything. Let's move, move on. So then he says, do you think I have a chance to get a job in the industry? And what else should I look to do to at least get a chance to prove myself? Sincerely, Deidrean. Does he have a chance at this stage of the game? Um, I think, yeah, you, you always have a chance. I mean, it's always, like I said, it's better if he were to try to get some pre-graduation experience. And of course, that's a decision he's gonna to have to make uh, because it sounds like he's in his fourth year and and it might mean uh, prolonging uh, the graduation 
but I think that would definitely help. Uh, if not, there's always a chance. Uh, it's just a question of uh, maximizing the chance. That's sure. why we're suggesting some pre-graduation experience. Yeah. Um, and another thing he could do is, like, a, like we've been discussing, is growing that network from now and looking at that from now. So he has some leads uh, when when it's time for graduation. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think it's interesting. He goes, uh, you know, what else should I do to at least get a chance to prove myself? And I think he, the chance is right now. He's got to prove it to himself that he can make it, you know, considering his situation. He's in the last year. He's got no co-op experience. He's got to prove to himself that he can do it. It's not proving himself to a boss or getting a job and, you know, seeing if you can do well in that job is about proving to yourself, I think, if you can handle this type of situation. You know, you have no friends or it seems like you might not have any friends. Uh, you don't have the co-op experience. So what can you do right now to make this work? And it really comes down to, from what I understand, finding your own, you know, internship or your own summer job. And that comes with networking and kind of reaching out to these associations and to other firms and to see if they can do something for you. I think it's that hustle you need to hustle at this point right um any final thoughts uh no i think uh, i think we've you know we've... covered it okay yeah. <laughs> well thank you so much for doing this i Glad really appreciate help. that thanks um oh one last point uh dj you know what i think you should really check out my book the unfair advantage it talks about how to network um how to reach out to these other companies or to other employers and really you know get the most out of it if you do score an interview or an information inter interview uh, I do talk a lot about that and how to approach that. So you might want to check that out. I have a link in the description down below. If you guys want to book a video mentoring session with me or have a question for me to answer in a future video, go to my website, 101mentoring.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.